<laughs> I'm not sure when I started thinking about him again. It had been at least 16 years. I had pretty much forgotten all about him up until that point. I went about my life as a waitress and a dishwasher for a small town diner. The only place to get food aside from Jiffy Mart in the garage up the street. The town had countless legends that involved death of some form involving creatures that most people laughed at. Late one night, when only the regulars were there, everyone decided to pitch together and tell me some of the stories. I had just moved there two months before and still hadn't had the time to listen in on the latest encounters with the local creatures. They started it off by telling me about the rake and how it drove its victims to insanity by demanding impossible things from them or perching at the foot of their bed after night waiting for them to wake up so it could kill them. I laughed it off. That doesn't sound that bad, I said. At least it was trying to get it over with. Neely, the man who told the story, huffed in irritation. Tell her about the operator, he said. The what? I asked. That sounds like a bad horror movie I saw once. Don't laugh, Gina, the owner said. He's real. Ever wonder why you don't see kids in this town? Or why the school is shut down? He lives there. He takes children and then goes after their families. He dates back as far as anyone knows. He took the waitress you replaced and her son. Uh-huh, and pigs fly, I said. I don't doubt that they exist. They just don't scare me, I exclaimed. What about those cryptids you like so much? Do any of those scare you? Sean said. Sean was my favorite person I had met in this small town. He was two years older than me and loved to listen to my tales about the cryptids my parents had chased throughout my childhood. Yeah, lots of them scare me. I saw a few of them, I said. It was something I never really talked about. But since these crazy small town folks believe their own legends, I suppose they would believe me when I told them what I had seen. What scares you the most? Gina asked. I mean, one that you've actually seen, she questioned. I sat back in the chair I had drugged behind the counter and pondered which one scared me the most. The Dover Demon, I said. It scares me because it looks like an alien and I have a phobia of them. All it does is wait to scare people, but it freaks me out on looks alone. The Cree Indians even have it in their stories. It's not just this one that scares me the most, but it's a close second. Well, what scares you the most then? Neely asked. Pax, was all I said. I stood up and went into the back to finish up the dishes. There was no way I was telling them about Pax at night. They would have to wait until a day when I was off work and could come by during the day to tell them Pax's story. The next week, after a lot of badgering on their part, all four of us went to the diner on my one day off. We all showed up early in the morning, just after the sun had come up. I didn't want to risk telling them about him too close to dark. Well, Sean said, here we are. Now what the heck is a Pax? Pax was my not-so-imaginary friend as a child, I told them. He looked like a ragged and matted Saluki dog with no mouth and six black eyes with red irises. I know that ain't all there is to it, Neely said. There has to be more to it than that. There is, I said. There's a lot more. Pax first showed up at a seminar my parents had taken me to, about hellhounds. Of course, I wasn't allowed any farther than the lobby, but I could still hear what they were saying. I was so bored and told the receptionist that I wished I had someone to play with. She told me to run along and stay out of trouble, so I decided to run around the museum it was held in. I found Pax in the room the curator used for the most expensive artifacts that they were still studying and researching. 
He was sitting in a corner of the room, swaying back and forth. I said hi to him, and it went from there. He followed me wherever we went. When I told my parents about him, they thought I had come up with him as a way to keep myself from being scared of the cryptids they chased. All of that happened when I was five. Everything was great with him around, until I turned seven. We had moved into a house near the mountains in Italy while they did research on the tatzel worm. I liked to play in the backyard with Pax every day. A few months after my birthday, he killed someone's dog and drug it into the backyard. At first, my parents thought I had done it. I had never hurt an animal in my life, and they thought it was me. It started to happen during the weeks I was stuck inside, and they decided it wasn't my fault and some wild animal was killing them. I kept telling them. It was Pax, nothing else. One day while my parents were home, he thought it would be funny to walk in front of a mirror in the room they were in. That was the only way anyone else could see him. My mom screamed so loud she couldn't talk for a week. After that, they tolerated Pax's pranks until they started to get a little violent. I stopped there and took a deep breath, shaking slightly at the thought of what came next. Next came the really bad pranks. A misplaced knife in the bottom of the sink while my mom washed dishes. My dad almost falling down the stairs after being pushed. Then finding rabid animals in the house. I realized that whatever that thing was that was pulling all of those horrible pranks wasn't Pax. What do you mean? Sean asked. He was the only thing around that could have done it, right? Yeah, I said but something had to have happened to him. It was just too sudden. I think my parents came back from one of their hunts for the tatzel worm was something else that took his place. I noticed that his eyes had changed. The color swapped from black and red to red and black. My parents seemed to realize this too because I had already changed the color in the pictures I drew of him without even realizing it. After a lot of research, my parents realized that this creature that had Taking my friend's place was a demon called a Mimic. They didn't have a name of their own and liked to take the place of imaginary friends and guardian spirits. That's what Pax was. I rescued him from his own hell and he protected me. He couldn't even protect himself from this demon though. We found out sometime later that it couldn't kill anything that wasn't alive. But that was way after the 15th priest ran screaming that God was dead and hell was there out of our house. I looked down at my hands and sighed and kept on with the story. The mimic finally got up the courage to attack us on its own. My dad is stuck in a wheelchair and my mom won't even speak to me. She thinks it'll come back if she talks to me. She prays every day now. One of her favorites is that Pax will come back and save me since she thinks he was an angel. It took me a month after the attack to get out of the hospital. I stood in the living room and screamed at it to get out and never come back or I would kill it. Can you imagine a seven-year-old screaming death threats at a demon? That was me. I told it I would find Pax and we would kill it. It left, but it never stayed away. I took in a shaky breath. It follows me everywhere I go to this day. I don't go into the woods because I'm afraid it'll sneak up on me and finally kill me. What about Pax? Gina asked, almost as a whisper. Did you ever find him? No, no, I said. It's not for lack of trying. I want him to come back. Remember how I laughed at your story about the rake, Neely? I've already seen it. I need Pax to come back and protect me. I'll be dead in a month without him. I let out a sob. I don't think I've ever admitted just how much I needed him. Gina, Neely, and Sean looked at me in horror. I was pretty much marked for death without Pax. Two creatures had found me interesting enough to want to kill me. Hell, I had already cheated death once. Why not try it again? All right, I said. I'm going home now. See you tomorrow, Gina. When I'd got home, a thought hit me. I knew I should have gone to the store when I left the diner. I yelled and slammed the door of my empty fridge. It was getting close to dark and I wouldn't get home in time to lock the door. Ah, screw it, I thought. If I'm going to die, I'll make it on my terms. I was by no means thrilled at the idea of dying. In fact, it took a major pep talk to get myself back out the door. The walk to the store was fine. Nothing happened that didn't every day. I got what I needed and started to head home. 
As it got darker, I became a little more paranoid, though. I transferred all of my bags from my right hand to my left and pulled out my pocket knife. If I was going out, I was going out swinging. The shadows crept up on me and I could feel the mimic getting closer as I walked down the street. I tried not to make any noise so I could hear it coming, but my shoes still scuffed the pavement. Please just let it be Sean trying to scare me, I thought. But the thought was a little too late. It came from my left and slammed me into the sidewalk. As it stood over me, I watched as it pried its mouth apart with a sickening rip. This was it, and I couldn't even stab it a few good times. I was about to die. Don't worry, Zoe. I swore I could hear Pax talking. He had always done funny things like that. It'll be over before you can even feel the pain, it said. You saved me from my pain, and now I'm going to do the same for you. I hadn't realized I was hallucinating until it was almost over. I felt the pain. Just like when I was a child, I had made something up to counter the horror I was seeing. It was Pax. This is Pax now, and it was Pax the whole time.